Hey guys, Dr. Dobson, and this was going to be a different video because I'm going to be showing some clinical footage with the audio from the procedure on how I like to give mandibular nerve blocks. Somebody asked me in a previous video how I give my inferior alveolar blocks, and so this is going to be a case where we did give a, a quad four block. Uh, this is a patient that came in for pain on the lower right, lesions on the four five and the four seven. The four six was extracted a long time ago. So we're gonna endo both of these teeth. But before we do that, we're gonna give a mandibular nerve block. So gonna get into the footage. The original audio is gonna be there. So we're gonna listen to that and then I'll explain uh, in increments as we go along. We can look straight out the window, um, tip the chin up a touch and open as wide as you possibly can. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna make another video on how I actually position them in the chair so that I can have a consistent setup, which is probably one of the most important things because the landmarking is always going to be the same regardless of where you position them. But I'll show how I position them in the chair uh, in another video. I just didn't uh, didn't have that recording here, so we'll continue here. Oh, I better take that. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, we can we can. She's just gonna take out a partial. Went yep, there. just on the tray is good. Perfect. Alrighty. So you're going to feel a sharp pinch in the back of the mouth here. Mm -hmm. So we'll have them open as wide as they can. Landmarking is the same as Malamid uh, Dental School would have taught you. You know, barrel on the premolars. I'll put a finger there to stabilize the needle. And then uh, here's, a, here's a little pearl. If the tongue is in the way like it is in this case, uh, like a large space occupying tongue, then just give it a little poke with the needle and it will retract like a snail going back into their shell. Uh, and then you don't have to worry about it for, you know, a good 10 or 30 seconds, which will give you time to um, to administer your block. So that's what we're going to do. Just say, you're going to feel a little pinch on the tongue. It will retract, and then you can go ahead and uh, inject two-thirds up the raffe. I'm just going to poke the tongue to get it out of the way. And you're going to feel a sharp pinch here. It's going to be in there for about 30 seconds. Let them know they're going to feel a pinch. going to be in there for about 30 seconds. Let them know that occasionally they'll feel an electrical shock sensation in their tongue or their lip and chin, which is normal. Happens about 5% of the time. And then we're going to contact bone, start depositing our cartridge, about three quarters of the cartridge, two thirds. And then once we've done that, we're going to start retracting. Let them know that as we're retracting, they're going to feel a pinch right around here as it enters new tissue. Going to feel one more pinch here. And then that's the mandibular block. We're going to give a long buckle as well for this procedure. And one of the biggest things, I'll let the patient know that they need to feel a numb lip and chin from the block. And that's going to be our indicator about whether we hit or not. Um, if the lip and chin goes numb right away or you get like a uh, electrical shock sensation at the lip and chin, you know that it's a direct hit. If it takes a while or it just goes tingly without feeling fat, then you need to give another one. That's good there. So we'll give that some time to settle in. And like I say, do keep an eye out for this area. Should go right up to the midline. The left side should feel totally normal. Right side should feel fat. Let them know that the tongue and the cheek will go numb as well because sometimes, you know, they'll feel numbness. They'll be like, oh yeah, I'm feeling numb. But if it's not in the lip and chin, then you didn't hit the block before it enters the mandibular foramen and they're not going to be having pulpal anesthesia. And the other super important thing is to not give um, the long buckle block anywhere near the uh, mental foramen because then the lip and chin is going to go numb anyway um, because of the infiltration anesthesia and you won't know whether the um, lip and chin is numb from the block or from the infiltration. So if you're working on premolars, then leave the infiltration alone until you have the lip and chin sign from the block. And that's pretty much how I give a standard block. Like I say, I'll show the chair set up uh, in another video, but if anybody has questions about any of that, then feel free to leave them in the comments.